Where are you at? Swagger? Yes, it, it, it must be a short video. You don't know what's going on? Oh my god. Yes, let me scan this up a little bit. Okay, is that your husband? My husband's freaking out. I think Paul's going to leave that, so. If it's, uh, if it's banned, then he gets banned. Ma'am. Bro, holy fuck. Okay, do I want to watch this? This is intense as fuck already. <sighs> Alright. Um, I'm going to watch this. Uh, viewer discretion is advised. Uh, the following video is probably going to be very disturbing for some people. I'm assuming there's not going to be any toes in here, but there might be. Let's just hope there's not. We just hope there's no toes. Come on, everywhere. Oh, my God. He has a little on top of it in the back of his head. What is your name? My name is Terry King. Sherry. You don't see a gun? No, I don't see a gun. Okay. Listen, I need you and your husband to back out of the residence and wait outside for the officers. Do you okay. hear me? Yes. All right. In Bro, May 2017, holy. police in the... Um, that's Monka S. May, that's my birthday month. Small, quiet town of Bel Air, Ohio, find a man dead in his basement. A gunshot wound to the head. Jesus when police arrive on the scene, Christ. they meet with the husband and wife that had found the deceased man. David Kinney and his wife Cherry are longtime friends of the victim, 43-year-old Brad McGarry. I can't fucking believe that. I'm, I'm assuming this. I went up right behind her. I noticed that the kitchen was scattered. There was stuff all over. I told my wife to Sherry something's wrong. When the police look in the basement, they find the body of Brad McGarry lying face down on the floor with a pool of blood around his head. Brad McGarry was an openly gay man in a small conservative neighborhood. His friends state that he had just ended a relationship with a man named Scotty, but they didn't know his last name. Bro, holy fuck, this is insane. While looking around the house, police noticed that it appears to have been ransacked. Oddly enough, they noticed that nothing has actually been taken. There were multiple newer phones Why? lying around, so a large TV, and even money on the floor. Police are convinced that the staged, robbery was staged. Yeah, that's what I was the say. next thought is that it was suicide. When the coroner arrives, he starts taking a look at Brad's body. Well, the, the wife said that the bullet was in the back of the head if it's suicide there's you 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 don't if, you, if you're committing suicide you don't shoot yourself in the back of the head one that seems pretty fucking impossible and two why the fuck would you why why would you care to do that i don't even think you'd be able to i mean maybe yeah i guess you could but no it is apparent that there is no, a gunshot don't wound to the head so he asks if there was a gun found anywhere but no gun was found since oftentimes suicide victims fall on top of the gun after committing the act, police roll the body over, but they still do not find a gun. Oh, 
Detectives begin interviewing friends and family of Brad right away, trying to form a timeline and gain as much information as possible as to who may have done this. After getting the full name of Scotty Butler, Brad's recently ex-boyfriend, they head to his house right away to interrogate him. When detectives arrive at the house, his mother answers the door and states <coughs> that Scotty has been in jail for the past three months for violating his probation. Well, there Scotty goes Butler that one. Is no longer a suspect as he had a solid alibi. I mean, solid detectives genius. decide to take a look around. Solid, he's in jail. You fucking <laughs> pretty solid. The neighborhood to see if there are any cameras filming towards Brad's house. Thankfully, one neighbor had a camera that faced towards the street Save. near Brad's house. They would be able to see who came and went from the house. They're gonna get him. While reviewing the camera footage, they continue to interview friends and family. David had taken some pictures and screenshots that could help detectives in the investigation, so they took his phone to copy the information. The issue the detective is having at this moment is that just the night before, Brad's cousin said something that completely changed the direction of the investigation. Huh? Sunday, we went to Grammy's. We were sitting around the table, it was just me and Brad. And Heather, which is another cousin of mine, and he made a comment how the DJ guy, he was coming over. Brad's intent was it was romantic. He made a joke about taking a nap, and it wasn't taking a nap. It, he was insinuating that they were having sex. It was like quotation marks. This was Sunday. This was Sunday. Maybe he was killed. Yes. What time did he leave? Between 1.30 and 2. Really? Yes, well, he was supposed to, that. he was dropping all the tuxes off. Huh? I also know that he was married to Two uh, years Brad didn't. Yeah. She being the wife didn't know all the time. They've been doing this for years. From what I understand, the two of them, Brad and DJ, kind of I don't know if they laid low or they completely broke up. But I guess they call him DJ or David Kenny. Really? Yes. The only guy this is the only guy he's ever told me about. Oh my god. Holy shit. The two guys were having a fucking... The two guys were having an affair. Holy shit. It's just... It's the guy. That's him. That's, That's him. insane, bro. Detectives made oh my fucking god. For the pictures he had. But the truth was, they were tracking where his phone was when Brad was murdered. As well as finding proof that him and Brad had a relationship beyond friends. When they took a look at his phone, even though he has deleted everything, they are able to see the text messages between David and Brad. Evidence shows that they were, in fact, in a sexual relationship. They review the phone history and find that David's phone was directly at Brad's house at the time of the murder. They also discover, while reviewing the neighbor's CCTV footage, that David had driven to Brad's right before the murder in his wife's car, then left 40 minutes later. David would then appear oh, again why? hours later in his truck with his family, delivering the weed eater Brad supposedly wanted to borrow. Oh my fucking Police god. Police know that David was there when Brad was killed. Jesus now fucking they need Christ. to work to get the truth out of David. <coughs> Where's your phone point you at Brad's house the time you get killed in the past three? I was not telling when Brad was killed. You were at his house? Yes, sir. I remember. Oh, oh god. Do you know exactly? Holy fucking shit. Yeah, you're toast. Bro. We'll walk through this together, bro. You are... Alright, no more pausing. No more pausing, chat. I don't know who he was, and I don't know his name. I swear on everything. What happened next? He went in the garage. Wait, so he was double cheating? it? Oh. 
still lying, bro. Oh, never mind. He's lying. Yeah, no shit, he's lying, X. I'm sorry to pause again, but he just added the extra guy in there to do the the bidding that he did. It's it's, it's fucking classic. Brad's front seat the limo is full stop. Yeah. No, ain't no way this Ohio guy snitching like this. What the fuck was that? Oh, it's, it's X is TTS. Oh my the god. The knows that people subconsciously hide their face when lying. Yeah. Especially from police. The police also know that Brad's SUV was still at the house and had not left since Brad was killed. So this version of David's story is a lie. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, and then why so then he just left and now he just dude so why? yeah why yeah no shit so he did Music in the back, like, like chimes. Damn it! What you doing, your family? Sir, I am. Tell me what happened. I did not kill him. You knew Brad was dead, and you brought your I did not know he was dead. What? The detective now creates Fuck a off. false story to help David become more comfortable with opening up about what happened. Even though the detective knows David will lie again, yeah, no he shit. also knows that the truth is getting closer. Dude, this this detective's doing real good at pressing this motherfucker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 About to give him. Oh, here we go. Is he actually gonna for it then? Was it an accident? Drop, drop all this and just let it out. Brad You're gonna get got. You're gonna get got right now, you fucking bitch. Somebody needs to swipe. Bro, it is low key annoying. Oh, my camera was blocking that the entire time. My camera was blocking his face the whole time. That's an L. Except for sometimes when it zoomed in. Their credit card on this Ohio uh, uh, detective. What? Story number three, exactly. He had it in his hand. Just kind of like waving at me, you know what I mean? Telling me, you know, you're up, I'm tired of you. I can't take my emotions this long and just call it quits. He kept waving at me, so I grabbed it. Okay. What happened after you grabbed it? I pushed him. This guy's lying again. Well, After this statement, David stops talking and asks for a lawyer. And even though he says he shot Brad, he will go to court pleading not guilty. Yeah, fucking idiot. Fucking dumbass. In February dumbass. 2018, 
David was convicted of aggravated murder with a gun specification. Because this man was able to do a assassin's job to someone he loved and his best friend, what could he do to his enemy or someone who opposed him? Kinney, for his part, did offer a brief apology in court, although he made neither an admission nor did he offer an explanation. Pretty much, pretty much the story. Really, really, really fucked up, terrible situation. What could he do to his enemy or someone who opposed him? Kinney, for his part, did offer a brief apology in court. No one gives a fuck about your apology, bro. Shut the fuck up. No one gives a fuck about your apology, you fucking bitch. Shut up. Pathetic! <laughs> yeah, I don't know who did that, but fucking true, you fucking pathetic bitch. Yeah, yo, shout out to the news channel for doing that. Pathetic. Right below him. That's so deserved. Pathetic. The defendant shall serve life in prison without the possibility of parole plus years beyond life in prison. Prison records indicate that David remains incarcerated. It's, it's pretty much the Belmont Correctional Institution in St. Clairsville, Ohio. Jesus, the 